Hello grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson two of the control of body and mind unit, uh, the second unit in psychology. Um, this is titled synapses and neurotransmitters. Uh, you can see that uh, that is also, you know, two of the key points. So synapses and neurotransmitters are kind of important. They are a big deal um, in this lesson. So there's your hint. Uh, we've also got types of neurons, so we'll get to those at the end. Let's jump into the first slide here. Okay, so this is a reminder. Uh, we have the um, a typical neuron. So the dendrites over here with the cell body. So the dendrites take in information from a bunch of different uh, places. They then uh, integrate the information to the side. Okay, I'm gonna send the information down. So they send information down the axon covered in a myelin sheath down the axon and it goes to different dendrites in different cells. So here we have then the axon terminal. What we're going to focus on today is this tiny, tiny place, the axon terminal. Uh, that is what's known as the synapse. You can see here, maybe you've seen it on the other diagrams. I didn't talk about it, but it's the synapse here, the synaptic cleft we're going to talk about. So uh, here we go. The synapse, uh, I'll come back to the slide, I'll show you a picture of it, okay? So we have like the end, the neuron here, the axon, and then the axon terminal, kind of like a bulb, and then here we have the dendrite. You can see dendrite is labeled here, and there's a tiny space in between. This whole part is the synapse, okay? So if you look closely at the picture of the neuron, you can see that there's a space between the axon terminal uh, of one of the neurons and the dendrites of another neuron. So this space is the synapse. Uh, the synapse is essentially a junction or a connection between neurons. So it's a place where information is sent across. Um, it is a very, very tiny space. Uh, they are essentially connected, but um, you know these neurotransmitters um, that we're gonna talk about next travel across them. So a synapse is a place for neurotransmitters to be sent um, across to, so that information can be passed along. So here again, we have the uh, picture of it. We've got the synapse, so the axon, the axon terminal. These little bulbs here contain neurotransmitters. So these go to the end and then they are pushed out and the neurotransmitters are these all these little dots. So they are little chemicals that will go into the receptors and then they will tell the dendrite um, and the other cell to fire or not to fire. So a neuron transmits um, across its synapse by releasing chemicals called neurotransmitters. So neurotransmitters are the little chemicals that are sent across here. So the little dots, these are little chemicals that are sent across from the axon to the dendrite. These neurotransmitters open chemical locks or excite the receptors. They make the um, receptors, um, you know, take the information and want to send it along. The neurotransmitters are like valves in a water system that allow flow in only one direction, from the cell body, down the axons, to the next neuron and to the dendrite. The information can in no way be passed oppositely. It can only be sent in one direction. So that means that you have um, neurons that go to your fingertips and away from your fingertips. They are different. Um, and both are very, very important. But information can only be sent one way. Um, from the axon and axon terminal to the next dendrite across a synapse. And a neurotransmitter is the chemical that makes that happen. So there are many different neurotransmitters. So at the end of your axon here, at the end of the axon, you have many different chemicals that can be sent across. Uh, one of them is norepinephrine. Uh, it's involved with memory and learning. Um, endorphins inhibit pain. Um, the oversupply or undersupply of certain neurotransmitters can be linked to certain diseases. It can be physical diseases or possibly mental health. Uh, we're all a little chemically imbalanced. Um, an under, understand, undersupply of norepinephrine uh, and serotonin may result in depression. Everyone's a little bit different. 
uh, everyone's chemicals are different and how they affect them so um, it, it's imbalances that can really be the problem for instance uh, again an undersupply of acetylcholine which is another neurotransmitter a different chemical uh, that, which is involved in movement and memory is associated with paralysis and Alzheimer's disease an oversupply of dopamine, which is again another neurotransmitter, is, which is involved in learning, emotional arousement and movement, can be linked to schizophrenia, while an undersupply is linked to Parkinson's disease. I want you to know, you know, generally, uh, maybe pick a couple of these. I won't ask you to list all of them, but like maybe one or two of these examples and, and how they're related would be good, good to know. Um, and then the types of neurons. So we got key point three showing up. Types of neurons. There are different types of neurons. Afferent neurons are one type, and these are sensory neurons. These are the ones that send information to your spinal cord and then up to your brain. Um, these uh, include from your eyes, from your ears, nose, skin, uh, all the way from your toes to your fingertips, and they send them to the spinal cord. So afferent neurons are from the senses and to the brain. Efferent neurons are motor neurons, or mo neurons that send signals from the brain to glands and muscles that make you move around. Okay, so efferent neuron neurons send information down them to um, send information uh, to move or to stimulate a gland or to sweat. Um, they send information away from the brain. And interneurons, Big surprise, carry impulses between different neurons in the body. So they are, you know, intermediates. Sometimes that is necessary, um, you know, for reflexes or if the neuron is too long. Um, there isn't one most likely that will go directly, you know, from your knee all, your, all the way to your brain. Uh, there's probably an interneuron in between there somewhere. Um, we now have, yes, important terms. So uh, there are three important terms for you to look up. If you have questions about those, again, always let me know. And then the reaction time lab. Uh, it might be best uh, to do this uh, at home, um, but we might be able to do uh, a little bit of the, of the lab at school. If you guys have questions, uh, please let me know. But give it a read over and see if you can do it at home before um, anything else. So uh, thanks so much for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in class and in lesson three. Thank you.